Frontend Authority is an online community that promotes the ongoing education of front-end technologies. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Good? All the way in the back? Good. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay. So, hello. My name is uh, Tanner Maris, and welcome to Decoupling the DOM with React. Uh, I'm a Ruby developer here at Planning Center. And I say Ruby developer, but most of us here know either close to or just as much about our Rails app as we do uh, the JavaScript that connects to the front end. Uh, depending on the project, I might even not look at a Ruby file for a couple of weeks. Actually, for the first six months or so of working here, Michael and I uh, worked on a Batman JS uh, mobile app. I don't know if any of you have heard of Batman JS, but uh, it wasn't until recently, however, that I had the pleasure of getting to know React. How many of you have written a JavaScript application before? Okay. How many use a framework like Angular, Ember, Backbone? How about Batman? Just me and Chan and Jeff. Awesome. Okay. How many used jQuery and a steady hand? That's right. All right. This talk is for you guys. Um, jQuery, though, is a great tool. Um, we use it to make web applications really quickly and with almost no boilerplate, right? Uh, you need a single line of code, that one little CDN link to get it into your page. Super easy to get started, really easy to use, and that's probably why it's so popular. For simple applications uh, with light interactivity and little to preferably no state to manage, jQuery can still be a pretty good choice, but that's about where I draw the line. It's really hard to write a jQuery app that's not completely coupled to the DOM. And <clears throat> that's not jQuery's fault. Uh, it's actually just kind of the way jQuery works, right? You need an event handled. Why don't we add it to the DOM? Uh, you need some data stored. Guess what? Let's add it to the DOM. But it's this decoupling from the DOM that isn't React's biggest or our strongest feature. That was actually more of an implementation detail. And after I came to this conclusion, I realized that my talk was actually incorrectly named. What I really want to talk about is how React lets you write declarative code in a very imperative environment. So being able to simply ask the question of your app, what am I right now? Uh, what's my current state? Am I loading? Do I have errors? How many, how many results do I have? Or do I have any pages left? Um, knowing this information at any time removes time from the equation. So not having that cognitive load uh, of where you're at in your app based on what thing the user has clicked makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to add features and also debug your code. So really, this talk should be called Removing the Fourth Dimension with React. Uh, but that sounded way too smart for me um, and it sounded a little too scary. So what really what I want to call it is just why I like React. Um, so <clears throat> let me show you. I'm going to change this to a mirror so we can all follow along together here. So here's our app. Uh, this is the, the jQuery version of our app. I'm going to call it Swappy1138. Swappy, for those of you who don't know, is the Star Wars public API. And it lets you uh, query for people, planets, um, your favorite films, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's just go through the app really quick and see what kind of uh, interaction we're dealing with here. So select a category, and may the force be with you. Uh, so here we've got films, people, planets, like I said. We've even got a dark side uh, option we can choose. So I'm just going to choose film. OK. Looks like we get some data here. So we've got a new hope. We can see there's a bunch of this uh, you know, key, key value data here, producers. OK, let's, let's click the next one here. Uh, go to people. We've got a little bit of a loader. OK, cool. Uh, now we have a next button and some more data here. So what happens when we hit next? Let's see. Wow, big surprise. We get a new page. Now we're at Anakin. Now we're at Boba Fett. And you can see that the, the app is actually handling all these states, right? So it's got a loading state. You see the previous button goes away when we hit the first page. We don't have it sitting there. Um, we got some next. And, uh, and, and, and if we hit the end, I think there's like 80 something characters. So I don't want to scroll all the way to the end to prove to you that next goes away. But, um, and we can choose what happens maybe. Uh, so we know what happens when we have results. What happens if we don't have results? So if we pick a category that doesn't exist, these aren't the results you're looking for. Sorry, that's a horrible Obi-Wan. Um, and then maybe what happens if we go and choose 
the path of the dark side. Well, fear is the path to the dark side. And that was actually uh, an error state. You can see the API uh, returned an error here. So that, that endpoint slash the dark side doesn't exist and we're handling the error there. So moderately complex app, right? We, I mean, we've got loading state, uh, button states, no result states, um, about four or five different states that we're handling here. So let's take a look at the, the code that runs this. Make sure I'm in the right branch here. We're good. <clears throat> okay. Can you see the code? Good, all the way in the back, readable, great. Uh, so I'm just gonna walk through kind of step by step through this app. We're, we're gonna learn how we build this in jQuery so that way when I show you the React solution, you can actually appreciate it. Um, if I just show you the answer, um, the, the payoff isn't gonna be as big, right? You're just gonna be like, hey, that's, that looks cool. Um, but if we show how we make it the old way uh, or the way that we're used to, and then I show you the solution, uh, we'll, we'll see how things that may have been pain points that you didn't realize uh, get solved in React. Uh, so just gonna walk through the app really quick. Uh, so here we got some boilerplate, uh, just bootstrap stuff. I, I, I am not a designer, so I just pull in bootstrap really quick whenever I need to. Uh, so we've got our metas, we've got our style sheets. Here we've got a little bit of style just to, to adjust some things a little bit, uh, you know, take the bullets off of the list and stuff. Um, here's something I want you to kind of pay attention to and we'll come back later. Uh, and just move straight to the body. So this is, this is all the markup that makes up this app. There's actually one little section left right there. So we've just got a header. We've got the P tag that just kind of describes what the app does. We've got our selects and you can see uh, the values of that. We've got that, that empty endpoint where we got no results. We've got all of the endpoints that match the options and then we have that option that didn't exist and return the 404. Uh, moving on, we've got our little loader. So this is just a, a div with the loading message and an H4. We've got some buttons. Uh, these are just little anchor tags with some button styles on them. And you see, I don't know if you notice this, but you see everything I've got here uh, has some sort of swappy class associated to it. Uh, and you'll see why that happens later. Here we've got our empty uh, UL to store all of our results and then some more buttons. I put them at the bottom and the top just so if you happen to scroll all the way to the bottom, you didn't have to go all the way back up to hit, hit a button. Keep going down. So we've got some script tags here uh, just to include jQuery and Bootstrap. So now we're into the jQuery app. Now we're into to the, uh, the thing that drives this whole thing. So here we've just got a uh, document ready shorthand. Uh, what are we doing here? So all, we, all the app does actually is on change of our little select it gets results with the value of that select. Uh, the values being these uh, URLs here. Get results, believe it or not, is the only thing that this uh, application does. So it just calls get results with the URL. The first thing I want you to pay attention to, or the first thing you're gonna notice as we go through this is how immediately jQuery has this imperative nature. And what that means is you're giving commands, right? So if you notice, all the verbiage that jQuery even uses is very uh, imperative itself. So this thing, show. This thing, hide. Uh, down later, we do, hey, grab that thing and toggle it. Uh, we're always telling the app what to do and we're never actually asking any questions. Um, we're just saying, hey, at this point, I need you to show this. Hey, at this point, I need you to hide that thing. So let's just go through uh, really quickly uh, all the, you know, the timeline of this method and just kind of get an idea of what, of what we have to load into our head to know how this app works. Uh, so initially, when you get results, we need to show the loader. We're going to hide that results field. That way, uh, when we're in, the, in between states, we're not showing results while we're loading. So that kind of empties that out and, and shows the loader while we're doing that. And then we also hide those previous and next buttons while we're loading as well. Uh, we don't want to have the buttons, you know, kind of collapse with empty results. It looked really weird. So I just hid those um, while it was loading. Now we get to our Ajax call. So we hit that URL that we passed in. Uh, complete gets called at the end of every Ajax method. Uh, so on error or success, we call complete. So I just said, hey, at, whenever you're done doing whatever you need to do, hide the loader. Uh, on error we're handling, so we're, we're taking that results div, we're shoving some HTML into it. So here I've got this HTML string uh, that has the fear as the path to the dark side message. Again, 
since we hid the results while we're loading, we've got to show it. And we got to remember to hide those buttons because we don't need buttons when we've got one result. Now the meat and potatoes of the app here, the success handler. Here I'm just setting some values just so I don't have to keep typing JSON dot all the time. Uh, and then we're checking if we have results do something else do something else. So what happens when we have results? Well, first we've got to empty out that div, right? So again, this is all stuff that's getting added into that timeline that we have to remember how this app functions. Uh, so now we've got to remember to empty the div because later we're going to add stuff to it or we don't know what's already in there. Uh, this is a pretty common uh, jQuery pattern is to get results from some JSON, iterate on those results, and then slowly add items to, to the DOM. So here we're kind of making a little template. So we start off with a list item that's got a well. I add those little, um, those little key values. So that is uh, right here. It's easier to see when you actually see it. So this begins this well. It, each one of these lists, this whole thing is a, is a well. And then each one of these P tags is one of these results right here. So we're just kind of shoving them all together into one little package. That way we can append each one. And then after we append them all, we've got to remember to show them. Uh, and then we've got to handle those previous and next buttons. So now we've got to remember, okay, we're going to toggle the buttons on and off. Should they be on and off? Uh, we get previous. Here we got to check, okay, is previous null, then we toggle it. If so, then we, we change the click, hand, click handler to, the, uh, to get results of the new previous value. Almost done. Then we go to what if we don't have any results. Okay, now we're going to take that results div and we're going to fill it with our empty results message. Again, we got to show the results since we were hiding them while loading. And then we hide the buttons. Whew, that was a lot. And all that because this all is happening in a singular timeline, we had to contain that in our brain in one space, right? We couldn't, we couldn't really separate that into any small digestible chunks because this is how the app works. And the only way to see how it works is to go back into the GUI and kind of test it out. So we'd have to click a new thing, see the loader. Okay. Okay. Now a button shows up and the results show up. So the other thing I want to, uh, okay. So I actually want to go back now. Um, now that we know how the app works, a couple things I want to point out, and these are going to be the possible pain points that we hopefully can resolve with React. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you, and I, and I told you to, to put this in the back of your head uh, when we first started, was this little section here. Normally, CSS is in charge of presentation, right? And we use it to style everything. We, we set margins, we set colors, we set fonts. It's doing something interesting right here, though. If you notice, we're actually controlling the functionality of our app. So no longer are we worried about what color should this thing be, but we're actually setting state with CSS. And this kind of goes into that idea of um, separation of concerns. Uh, so right now we're using CSS to hide different buttons that are actually controlling the functionality of the app. That to me feels a little gross. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but that's something that maybe we can, we can fix. We'll see. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is, holy cow, look at all of these selectors. Um, th I mean, there's at least 20 of them, right? And you could argue that maybe we can you know, take this and, and store that in a variable somewhere. That way we can just reuse that variable everywhere. Uh, but if you go down that path and then you try to separate any of these things, like so maybe we want to separate this into a add items method or something, you have to end up passing that selector into the method and now you've got you know selectors you're passing around it gets almost just as gross um, and so one thing that that is a product of that or a byproduct of that is is it makes the app really fragile right we have to ask the dom or or grab these items from the dom um, by their selectors and that makes for a pretty fragile experience anytime um, a designer or other developer goes in and, and sees these classes they're like you know what Swappy loading, that, that name kind of sucks. I want to change this to swappy loader. That's way better. Um, well, they just broke the app, right? Now the loader is never going to work. Um, if they go in even worse and change the swappy results class, I mean, this is the, most, this is the, the entire uh, body of the app. And if they just change this to anything else, um, maybe we change it to swappy search, the whole entire app is now broken. And there are certain conventions that, that even we, you know, having some old legacy uh, jQuery apps do, and you know, reserve IDs uh, for JavaScript things. So, so designers and other people know that IDs are special. You can't just change these willy-nilly because you're probably going to break something. 
uh, or if you can't use an ID, you, you maybe add like a uh, dash JS to the end of it or something to, to kind of denote, hey, please don't change this because my JavaScript is worried about it. Um, still though, uh, it's not a good situation to be in, right? At any time, someone could just change that one little class and now the whole app breaks. Um, the other thing I want to point out is this is very order dependent, right? So that, that timeline, that, that cognitive load of time, um, all these things have to happen, happen in a specific order, right? If we don't hide the buttons here, something's going to flicker, or maybe we'll, we'll see a jump in the results, like they'll, or they'll slowly get added instead of all happening at once. So all these things we have to remember to do in a very specific order, or else the user's going to have a bad experience, or there's going to be you know, some, sort of, uh, you know, some sort of flicker or glitch in the actual UI. Um, the other thing we have to do is, is with this timeline, since we can't, I mean, it's even for me as I was building this, it was, it was impossible to keep this all in my brain at once. So I had to constantly go back and forth between the GUI and what the app was doing. So I had to go, okay, how does this thing work again? Okay, I click the button and then the loader shows up. Okay, great. Then, okay, where do I have to hide the buttons? I had to remember um, there's this place where I have to hide the buttons, then there's this place I have to hide the buttons, then there's this place I have to hide the buttons. And I was even getting lost in this song and dance of, of messing with the DOM and talking to the DOM directly. Um, that is pretty much the app. We walked through it all. The one thing I want to do now is take a simpler version of this app uh, with, with less um, specs in it and convert it to React for you. Um, so we're not going to worry about a, a ton of these states, right? I mean, it'd, be, it'd take too long to show everything. Uh, so we're not going to worry about the error state. We're not going to worry about uh, the buttons. We're just going to go between loading and not loading and see what that looks like. And maybe we can see if we can solve um, some of these pain points. So I'm going to check out, I have a cheater way to do this. Check out a different example. Here's the small app. So I'm going to refresh just to show you what it looks like. Excuse me. So all this version does is on page load, sets the loading, and just returns results for film. So I've got a hard-coded uh, endpoint that we're hitting. And every time, it just does the same thing. We don't have any other options with selects. And so this is going to simplify it for us a little bit. And if we walk through uh, the code for this one, we can see it's a lot smaller. We still have this weird little CSS thing where we're kind of controlling uh, the state. Uh, the, the, the code itself got really small, right? Now we've got a 20-line uh, application here. So we're still, though, uh, doing this imperative, show the loader, do the AJAX, at the end, hide the loader, and then build our results, and then append all these things to the DOM one at a time. Um, so let's go ahead and start moving this over. So I'm going to open up a new file here, and I've got a cheater copy and paste file. Shh, you don't see that. Uh, so to start, we can just copy, I can just actually pretty much grab everything all the way up to this script tag. And we're going to move that over. The first thing I'm going to do, though, this is really important, is change this to React. Uh, great, we're done. Just kidding. So uh, the, the second thing I need to do is actually get React into the page. So there's this, there's this fun little library uh, called React Towel. Uh, basically just used for rapid prototyping in React, but it, it includes React, React DOM, and then a JSX transformer so that I can actually write JSX in the browser. Um, basically just a one-line include for React. Uh, I'm also going to grab this little component boilerplate, one, because I don't remember it all the time, and two, uh, to save time. So what this does is this creates our swappy React component. So uh, React has this create class thing. Uh, this is, I'm going to kind of breeze over some of these things since I'm assuming um, some of you don't know anything about React. Um, so we're just pretend React has this thing called create class that creates a component. Uh, React DOM is the thing that lets us take that component right here, swappy. And I don't know if you can see my highlighting that. I've been doing that a lot. Hopefully, you can see it. Um, so it ha takes that swappy thing and then renders it into the DOM somewhere. So it gets the element root and puts that swappy thing there. And now we're ready to start building this component. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is actually take all the HTML here and move that into my render function. So uh, all components in this create class 
uh, style need a render uh, method, and that's going to be in charge of rendering, believe it or not. Uh, it actually takes this, this uh, HTML stuff and uh, actually renders it into the DOM for us. So, uh, and you can see my, my text editor is yelling at me because these are reserved words, so we have to change them. So one little, one little minor modification, and now let's see what we got here. So if I change this to React, ta-da! So we've got our, our uh, header and our P tag in there, and we can see the loader's missing, and we don't have any results. That's totally fine. Let's just keep going. Um, so the second thing we need to do is do the thing that we were doing, right? We need to on, so the jQuery app on load uh, or on, on document ready uh, was showing this loader and then uh, doing the little Ajax call. So let's do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to copy that over. And a React component doesn't have a on ready exact uh, function, but there is one just like it. And I'm going to open this up really quick just so I can get some help. Component did mount is the method we're going to use. And this is a, a React lifecycle method, and it basically just says, hey, this component has been initialized in JavaScript. It's been shoved into the DOM. The DOM knows it exists. And now it's ready to do stuff to it. Uh, and this is actually a pretty common spot. It's a, it's a pretty um, common React convention to put any, any imperative code you do need to do. Uh, we can't get away from it completely. But this is usually the spot that we do it in. So I'm just going to put that entire thing in there. And actually, pretty sure if I just run this, it works just like before. So uh, just shoving all that uh, jQuery stuff into the component did mount, and the app works just like it did before. Now, that doesn't mean we're done, because we're not actually doing anything Reacty at the moment. We're just using it to do jQuery stuff. So let's start moving things out. So the first thing I don't want to worry about is loading right now. So I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of this loader. And we're actually going to let render handle building this uh, item. So right now we're doing this weird thing where we have a, a giant HTML string and we're just kind of assembling this template uh, piece by piece, string by string, and it feels really gross and dirty. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of this whole thing. And we're going to let the React render handle that. And now you can see our component did mount is getting really, really small. And this is really cool. Um, so instead, what we want to do here is just give React some state. We want to say, hey, uh, you got results, why don't we just tell you you have results? So we're going to use um, React set state, and I'm going to do, this is a little ES6 thing, so I can, this still refers to the component, um, so I don't lose the scope of this. Uh, and we're going to call set state, and then set state is just an object, uh, and we're going to say we have results, and we're going to set those to json.results. And that's it. So all we've done now is just told React, hey, when you mount, do some, do some Ajax, hit this endpoint. When you get back some stuff, um, save that. Hold on to it. And actually, set state is going to trigger uh, this render method to be called again. And it's going to re-render with whatever new state that we have. Or if I'm actually outputting state, it'll re-render it with that new state. Um, now that we have state, though, we have to give uh, the React component some initial state. So there's this other lifecycle method called get initial state that is used for setting up the app. So this is before the, the React component mounts. Uh, you're going to say, hey, here's some stuff you might need to know, because this component is actually going to render one time uh, before this stuff happens. So we need to give it some initial state, um, or else it'll actually, it'll actually error on us. So this one, we just return uh, another object, and we're going to say results. I think I've spelled that wrong every time I've typed it. Um, Results is an empty array. Now we need to actually use them. So we've got results now in our state. Uh, now we need to actually do something with it. So we're going to spit those right into our render method, into this UL. Uh, I used, so converting that from, uh, so React has some, some polyfills, I guess, if you will, uh, that, that use. So we can use like the native map function that normally we couldn't use uh, just using jQuery. So I converted this jQuery results each and this for loop to use the new map function so that we can get an array back, uh, a new array back, actually. Um, so I have a little copy and paste for that. And I'll go through kind of the differences really quick. OK, so here's our new, here's our new, um, our new results builder. So we're going, instead of grabbing the JSON results, now we're going to grab this state results. And we're going to get a new array out of this. 
And this is kind of just a little implementation thing, but uh, Array, uh, React keeps track of any items that you create in an iterator. And to help it, you need to pass it a unique index. So that's all that this index does. And so I'm just passing that as this key here. Um, but we're looping on results. So for each result, we're going to make this new list item uh, with a class name well. And then because, like I said, like we showed before, each of, so this is one result. Each of these results has uh, more data. So it's got a little key and then a value here, right? So th this object keys is going to loop on those uh, that data and create those little p tags that have the the key and the result there. Uh, if you don't know object keys, this just takes an object and creates an array out of its keys, and then we can use that array to map on. And then you can see here we're getting the result with that key, and that gives us the value for that. Uh, and this is kind of a common way to loop on objects in in React and in JavaScript. And now we should, now that we've moved everything out, we're using state now. We've got our, uh, our state, uh, our results looping right here. We should be able to see this thing working. Boom. There's our results. Something's missing though, right? The loader's missing. So we, we've got our results now. We're using uh, the state to get it. Uh, but now we need to add the loader back. So let's do that. This is where it gets really fun. So what I want to do is ask a question, right? So I don't want to do this imperative thing where I'm saying, hey, loader show, hey, loader hide. I just want to ask, hey, am I loading? And if I'm loading, show the loader. If I'm not loading, show everything else. Uh, so I'm going to write down what I want to do, and then we'll kind of make the app, we'll make the state deal with it later. So here's what I want to do. I want to say, uh, I'm going to check my state, because I'm going to store this somewhere. I'm going to say, if, if I'm loading, do something. And bear with me here. This is going to get a little freaky. You're probably like, what the heck is he typing? Um, so this is just a multi-line ternary syntax. So I'm just using these parens so that it knows which part is each part. And this is just a common ternary uh, question mark colon syntax here. So what this lets me do, though, is say, if I'm loading, do something right here, and else do something right here. So all I have to do is take this loader, move it into here, take this whole UL, and just spit it right there. And now we're going to let the React render method take care of this for us. So now if we go and check, the loader's still not there. OK, we know why, right? We expected that because we're never actually telling it when it is loading, right? So loading was always false or null, so we never got loading. So let's hurry up and fix that. Uh, so here's the one part we have to, again, go to that timeline and add that. And we're going we're gonna to load up the app in our brain. And we're going to say, OK, when are we loading? Well, initially, we're not loading, right? So on initial state, our loading is going to be false. When we mount, that's when we're going to get the, we're going to start that Ajax call. So I can say right before then, we're probably loading, right? So this just to, I mean, we're not exactly loading, but just for argument's sake, we're going to say loading here. And this is the only time we're actually loading. And then we know after the Ajax call, just like in the, in the jQuery version, right after that success, when we get results, uh, we are no longer loading. So we're going to set loading to false right here. So now we've got React handling the state of loading for us. And render is just going to take care of this for us. So if we go back and we refresh, it's still not there. Does anybody know why? Uh, no, it's, it's actually a problem with that first thing that I mentioned. And that was the CSS is handling state for us. Ugh. So uh, because we had CSS controlling the state of that loader, and because it had a class name that matched, the loader was just always hidden all the time. Uh, and so now if we go back, we get loading, and then we get our results, right? So do that again. Huzzah. That's it. That is the jQuery conversion to React. Now I want to go through and point out originally those things that were pain points before. Let's see if we fixed any of them. Um, so the first thing that we notice that I just fixed was we no longer have that state in CSS anymore, right? We were able to get rid of all of that, all of those selectors. In this case, we had just the one. Uh, but we were able to get rid of those selectors that were um, changing the functionality for us. So now all we have are things that are con actually controlling presentation. And one little thing that you may not have noticed is now, actually, I can get rid 
of all these class names, they just sort of melt away. We're no longer uh, concerned or attached to uh, those class names in the DOM at all. So now we can get rid of uh, any class name that we were using before uh, to reference in jQuery, and now we just have classes uh, that are actually dealing with presentation. So we've just got the lead here for some of those lead styles, and then we've got the well and the list item, and just to prove to you that it still works, there it is. Um, the other thing that we noticed is that the timeline, so that, that one spot <clears throat> uh, where that cognitive load comes in, now is way, way smaller. Now we've got 10 lines of a space where we actually have to load the app in our brain and remember what's happening. So this component did mount is kind of the one space where we have to go back and remember how this thing works. But we made it a lot simpler. All we've got is a initial, we've got a set state loading true, okay, great. We hit Ajax, and on success, we set our results, and now loading's false. That's all we had to remember. Uh, so that makes it a lot easier to figure out what's going on and reason about what's happening in our app. Um, a fun little byproduct that came out of this is that debugging is actually really, really cool with React. Uh, so say that I had to pass this off to a designer to handle the loading states, right? I'm like, hey dude, I finished all the React stuff, all the data's hooked up, I just need you to make a pretty loader for me uh, because mine is kind of boring. Um, so I gotta pass this off to him. Normally, I'd have to explain to him, hey, uh, so you gotta go in, uh, when the app loads, it just hides that, so you need to either comment out all that Ajax stuff so it doesn't hide it anymore, um, or you can just go into your inspector, uh, find that um, loading div, unhide it, and then hide the results div so you can see what it actually looks like when there aren't any results. Um, and sometimes that either gets way too confusing and you just end up having to just like redo the state every time the thing loads, uh, or commenting out a bunch of code that you forget to uncomment. Uh, we can just manage that with state now. So because React is handling uh, the render method is actually handling all the state for us. We can actually use that state to our advantage. And maybe just like right here, we just set this to true. And then what happens? We're just always loading. Uh, so really cool thing, React gets the loading state. And because the render method is just saying like, hey dude, if you're loading, I'm gonna show loading. It just does that forever. So it doesn't even care that we have results. It doesn't care about anything else that's happening because I've told it, hey, when you're loading, just show loading. And then the designer can go, I mean, I can give it to him just like this and he can mess with it. And then when it, he brings it back to me, I'll just set this back to false. And now the app works just like it used to. Super cool, uh, really, really awesome. Um, so now that we've gone through this, this conversion of the light app, I just wanna walk through really quick, because I'm running out of time here, uh, on the big app, on the, on the finished product, and just kind of see how those same uh, pain points translated. So here's the, uh, let me refresh again. So here's the, uh, the React app, the final solution from the jQuery one. So let's go back to the jQuery one really, really quick and look at um, that one. Notice something about the colors here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of scroll through this and we see there's a lot of greens, which are strings. And there's actually just a lot of every color, right? There's like reds, blues, purples. It's kind of a rainbow over here. If we go to the React app, we notice one thing, hey, all those styles are gone. So if we look uh, back at the top here, remember we had those, those little CSS things, uh, things setting state for us. Well now, uh, those are all gone. If we go through here, the colors look interesting. They're just kind of the same. It's like blues and oranges. And that's because, even just because the syntax highlighter is showing us, we're only manipulating data here. Uh, we're only talking about data. And the only time you actually start to see green is in our templates. So I've got all these little sub-render methods that have a little bit of green in them, um, but not a lot, right? And here's the part. This is that whole, the whole app basically on the other side that was this huge green and blue amorphous blob over here. Uh, that just turns into this really simple, easy to, to look at uh, method. I mean, it's, it's long because I've, I've new lined every single object key, but um, if we walk through it, it's like, hey, get results, all right. Loading true, error's false. All right, cool. Complete, loading's false, great. Oh, we got an error, let me guess, errors are true. Turn the buttons off, cool. When we're done, we don't have any errors, and we just set up the data just like we did before. And that's all, that whole app just now is condensed into the, just these little state manipulations. Uh, makes it way easier to reason about. Here's the really, really pretty part. So all that stuff, um, all that, all that uh, state handling, 
with a little bit of massaging turns into something kind of pretty. Um, and so here is now the new, the new render method in React. And we can just kind of walk through this and it just reads like a book, right? So if we're loading, render loading. If we've got errors, render errors. Hey, do we have results? Render the results, else no results. And that's it. I mean, if you walked into this as a newcomer coming to this app and you're like, man, how does this thing work? Uh, it couldn't be explained any plainer, right? Another fun thing that goes on with the debugging is just like we did in the other one where I set the state of the loader to false, uh, we can actually kind of massage it a little bit here and we can do the same thing. So if I wanted to check the loading state, I can just kind of fake it and say, hey, you're not loading, uh, we're loading. If I want to see what errors looks like, I can just not on there and we'll get our error state. Fear is the path to the dark side. And then I'm like, hey, shoot, what does it look like when we don't have any results? And that's our no results message. So it's super, I mean, makes it really, really awesome for debugging because you can just go back and forth and as, and as many times as you refresh, you don't have to reset up you know, any of these things. If you want it to have 10 items in it, you can just set 10 items in there and they'll always be there until you change it. Um, that uh, is all I have. Thank you guys. Um, I was wondering about the <laughs> about the towel script that you you added. You said it was really good for quickly prototyping stuff. Yeah. Um, as someone who doesn't know any React and wants to get into it, would you suggest using that or using a different boilerplate to get started? I mean, this is this is just fun. So I you know I've just got a a blank HTML page. So if you if you don't if you didn't notice the URL that I'm hitting here is just a, a HTML file on my computer. Um, that's kind of all it's good for. Um, I mean, he even recommends like you don't use this in production at all. Um, but it was a pretty easy way just to kind of explain it and then also control it. Um, I, I could have used something like JS bin that does have React as an option in libraries that you can choose. Um, or JSX is a, is a language you can choose to write in. Um, but I wanted to use the pretty Atom text instead. So it was just mainly because I wanted to use that editor. And then I wanted to use the, uh, the Git check out there. But yeah, just, just kind of play with it. I mean, you can see here's his, here's his page. Um, to get it set up, let's actually throw in the towel. So throw in the towel is, an, is a JSX transformer that lets you write JSX, which is uh, this stuff right here. Even though it looks like HTML, it's not really HTML. Um, so React Towel is just a single line uh, script that includes React, React DOM, and throw in the towel. Hey, my, per my pull request got merged. There's links here now. There weren't links before. Um, so yeah, so I mean, if you look, just one little script, you just declare that this is a text babble script type, and then you can just start writing modern ES6 and JSX right in, right in just a little HTML file. So yeah, super cool for just kind of throwing something together. Any questions? Yeah, I actually have one question. I don't know anything about, well, I just a tiny bit about Angular. How, how does this differ from Angular in terms of ease of use, structure, advantages? On a, just simply. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I honestly idea. haven't used um, Angular or Ember uh, personally. The one thing that I, I know about them is they're a lot more opinionated uh, and they want to kind of take more control over the app than just the, the V layer, the view layer. Um, the, the biggest thing that I've heard, I, I mean, I, and I have, again, I haven't used it, is just the, the difference between that imperative code style to the declarative. So um, just asking questions, using state, uh, as as the way that render uh, controls the app is probably the biggest difference that I would say. But I again, um, you probably have to ask an Angular guy that that would know. Thanks.